welcome. I want to start off by with a little disclaimer. This video is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's just going to be me playing around, and I'm going to be uh, incorporating, uh, um, creating some stuff in Blender, and then using uh, 3JS to create a little environment in uh, the web browser. And it's going to kind of resemble a Doom level, although it is not something you can import into Doom or play in Doom because Doom is not truly a 3D game, blah, blah, blah. It's just for fun and to practice my skills. And I, again, it's not a step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, I am going to be using a lot of um, scripts and shortcuts that I've written for my work process, for my flow, um, that I hope to talk about more in the future. I hope to talk about all this stuff more in the future, more on Blender, more on 3JS. Obviously, this is Doom month here on Films by Chris. Um, but if you go to uh, my uh, GitLab page, so gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000, there you can search through my projects. One of my projects is my Vim setup, which actually has um, uh, you know my Vim configurations and install script, uh, my Tmux configuration, and also a bunch of uh, skeleton files, just basically templates for different uh, scripts, scripting languages and stuff that I use, which I'm going to be using a lot of today. Uh, I'm also going to be starting off with my 3JS template. This is a basic little 3JS template I created, and it actually even has a script in there called 3JS Git, uh, which we're going to run here in a second. And when you run that, it basically uh, pulls down this project and creates a little starting environment for you. So I am running an Apache server, but you should be able to use pretty much any web server uh, you'd like. Uh, this is where it's going to be. It's not there yet. Let's go ahead and go over here to the shell. I'm in my web directory, and again, from my GitLab page, I'm going to type in uh, 3JS Git, and then I'm going to give the name of the project that I want, and I'm just going to call this D for Doom, you know, and it just pulled down basically my template and put it into a folder called D. Uh, so now I can go into D, and we can list all the files that are here. And if I come back here to uh, my web browser and point it to that directory, I'm going to hit F5, and there we go. We have our basic little, this is uh, the default little template I have in there. It's a cube that every time you refresh the page, it changes color. Uh, I'm not spinning the cube, we're actually spinning the camera, as you'll see here as we move on. It sets up some basic lighting and a basic background using CSS. So let's go ahead and start working on that. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a Doom-like um, level that's not going to be playable, although you could theoretically make a game out of this. Uh, but the first thing we do, I need graphics and textures and all that stuff. And uh, although Doom itself is free and open source under a GPL license, the, the game uh, source code, uh, the art and stuff is not. So let's go ahead and use some graphics from FreeDoom, which is a uh, free implementation of Doom uh, and it's easily installed through your repositories. It's in Debian repositories. Uh, and I'm just going to use a program called um, uh, do. So, so do text here, which will extract all the information from the free doom wad So I'll get all the, the level files, all the uh, sprites and floors and, and wall textures and sounds and whatnot. I'm just going to extract all to this directory I'm in, just dumping it all. So now that's all in here with my project. Kind of a messy way to do it, but we're just playing around here. And as you can see, we have a sprites folder. And you would think textures would be in a texture folder, but no, that's actually where some text files that explain how to compile uh, the, the textures are in. We're actually going to be looking at flats and patches, one of which is your floors and ceilings, and the other one is your walls. I uh, think patches are walls and flats are ceilings. I always get it backwards. Anyway, let's go ahead and open up Blender. Oh, and actually this is a level I just, I did a test run of this. We're going to make a level that looks something like that. Let's go ahead and start up a new file, delete the default cube. I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to add in a default plane. Uh, and again, I'm going through this quick. This isn't a tutorial. I'm going to rotate X 90, enter to rotate on the, on the 90 degrees on its axis. And I am now going to hit SZ2 to scale it up to twice the height. So that is our little plane there. I am now going to pull out another window here. And I'm going to choose our UV image editor here. And with our plane selected, tab and edit mode, U, and I'm going to do a um, UV unwrap. Now I'm going to click here on open, and I am going to go into our directory that we just extracted from our Doom wad, and I'm going to go into flats and click here to see that. Yes, yeah, so these are all the uh, ceilings and floors. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's go to patches. 
patches, patches, patches. And I'm going to choose a wall texture, something uh, similar ratio to what I just created. So I'm going to grab this brick wall here and click open. Uh, so we've now mapped that uh, based on our plane here, but it is not applied. If I have F12, you won't see it. In fact, everything's black because our lighting isn't very good. Let's go to our world uh, tab here, hit ambient occlusion, environment lighting, and change the ambient occlusion to multiply. So now we should have a nice white plane that we can see. Uh, now I'm going to go over to materials, say new material, and I'm going to turn the specularity down. Specularity is basically how shiny something is. If you want your wall to be shiny, you can leave that up. I'm putting it down. And now we're going to go to textures and say new texture. And this little drop down, choose the image we've already created. Still not there if we hit F12. Oh, it does show up. But it doesn't. it's not going to show up once we create the rest of our walls. We're going to have to do more with our textures here in a moment. I'm going to hit escape to go back into our view here. Seven on the number pad to go to the top view. And five to get out of um, perspective mode. So everything here is, uh, there's no perspective to it. It makes it easier for us to line stuff up. I'm going to tilt here a little bit. A to unselect everything, B to box select. I'm going to select those two vertices on that side. Seven so go to top view again. And I'm going to hit E to extrude this wall. And I'm going to hit down control to lock us in to give us nice straight walls. So I'm just going to start building a level here. E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude. We'll do an angled wall here. E to extrude, angled wall this way, E to extrude. And I'm just going to go all the way around like this. Again, holding down control to lock us onto the grid if you want makes things a little bit cleaner and nicer. And I'm going to create a long hallway down this way. Long hallway up this way to here. And then you can see we're just going to finish up our wall here. I'm going to E to extrude it down and line it up with our wall right there. There we go. We have our walls. But if I was to reposition my camera so I can see all that, move here, control alt zero on the number pad, uh, tab out of edit mode, select my camera, G, and then center, wheel click. My clipping is a little off here because our level's kind of big. We're going to hit F12 and you'll see that our textures are not right. The one wall right here is correct, but the rest is all stretched out. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of that. Select our little walls here and hit uh, tab to go into edit mode. Uh, then control tab, faces. I'm going to A to select all and then shift and left click twice on the wall that has the correct texture. Uh, the little original wall we created. Now if I hit U, I can go down to follow active quads and uh, you can either, I think you can choose either length or average length. Here I'm just going to choose average length. Click OK. And you can see it mapped that all out so that uh, they have the correct width but they're all the height of the texture. If I hit F12 now, you can see our wall texture is correct all the way around. Uh, this right here is just clipping because of our camera. Our camera settings, we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, so we have our walls. Let's go ahead and add a floor. I'm going to leave the, the ceiling blank. We're just going to add a wall or a floor here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now angle it like this just so I can see the bottom all the way across. This is just one way to do it. Control tab, go into vertices, A to unselect all, B to box select. I'm going to select all the bottom, making sure I have none of the top vertices selected. And I'm just going to hit F. We now have a floor. If I hit F12, you can see the floor. The texture isn't right we have a floor there. Let's go ahead and work on the texture for that. Uh, and there's different ways you can do this. I'm just going to go into top view here. And I'm going to go to U. And I'm going to say unwrap from view bounds. Boom. And somewhere here, right here, because I scrolled over, I should be able to zoom in on this. We have our wall texture. Let's go ahead and down here, we're going to say open. And we're going to go up to flats. Let's go ahead and hit this thumbnail view and choose a ground texture. Let's go ahead and do something like like this. No, let's do let's do this one. This one is a very doom looking one. So I have that selected. I'll click open. And if I hit F12 now it's going to be very stretched out because we actually have that uh, one texture stretch across the entire ground. So what I'm going to do is over here in our UV editor with all the vertices selected, I'm going to hit, uh, oh, also, we have to, another reason it doesn't look right is because that's the other texture. But uh, let's go ahead and 
do that first. So I'm going to come over here uh, and I'm going to go back to materials. I'm going to escape out of our view here. And we have the floor selected. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say new texture. So I press the plus button there. I'm going to say new. Again, I'm going to turn the specularity down. I'm going to now assign that to the floor. We can give it a different color here if we want, just so we can see that we've selected the right thing. Now I'm going to go into textures. I'm going to say new. I'm going to select the texture we just imported. And I'm going to come down here and under UV, uh, I'm going to choose UV map and I'm going to hit F12. And in fact, I didn't do that before. It may not, we need, might need to do that uh, with the wall textures because they may not export properly if I didn't do that. I can't remember if I did that yet or not. Uh, so now we have the correct floor texture, but it's, it's stretched out. Just one of the patterns stretched out over the entire floor. So what I'm going to do is come over here in our UV editor with all the vertices selected. I'm going to hit scale and I'm just going to scale this up. And the bigger you scale it, the smaller the, the tiles will be on the ground. So now I can hit F12 here and you can see that we have our tiles all here like so. If I scale it up bigger and hit F12, they're now smaller. If I scale it down smaller and hit F12, they're now larger. So you just get it to how you want the ground texture to look. I think somewhere in between the two that I keep doing, that's good enough. Okay, so we've done all that uh, and let's go ahead and hit escape and Let's go to our first material here. And I did not select the map here. So it's rendering proper in Blender, but I'm pretty sure we have to pick UV map here uh, for it to render properly in our game engine, our 3JS. So still everything looks good here. And now what we can do is tab out of that. I have our little level selected. I'm going to hit uh, file export Oop. file export and I'm going to this is just what I always use you can use there's different ways to export stuff to be imported but I'm going to use the Colada I believe is how you say that uh, at the DAE file type and I'm going to go into where our little game is set I'm going to go to models DAE I already have a default scene here that we're going to override and I'm going to say selection only in this particular case. You can do the whole scene, it will import the cameras and lightings and stuff, but I just want that one object, so I'm going to say select it only. Export. Now, of course, if we come back to our game here and hit F12, nothing's changed because we haven't imported that. So, let's go ahead and I'm going to vim into our main JS here from the template I've created. We're going to go down to this cube and we're just going to delete the cube, save that, and if we refresh now, you can see the cube is now gone. I'm going to go to the bottom of my file here and I'm going to use again some of my Vim shortcuts. I'm going to type 3JS and hit Control X, Control K. And down here I have all my templates for 3JS and I'm going to choose the DAE and it's going to create a function here that we can import or use to import. Uh, it tells me how to download the Collada file, um, but I actually already have that in the template, so I'm going to delete that. And now we have to add this to our HTML, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to go into our index HTML and right here I'm just going to paste uh, and remove those comment lines there save that and then we'll go back into our JS our JavaScript file here and so now all we have to do is call that function and tell it what model to to import so I'm going to go into our init function here and somewhere right about here I'll just say load DAE and I will say to import from models DAE, we're going to say scene. And I want to get rid of this second dot. I'm just leveling up because we're working in a subdirectory, but we want it to look at the main directory. Now, if I come in here, refresh all this, here is our level. I'm just, I have a rotating camera here. It's not a FPS camera. Uh, I set it the way we've created it. Um, our walls are one-sided, so if we were to go back out like this, we can go on the outside and see through the outside walls, which is nice for what we're particularly working with here. Um, so yeah, there is our level, but we're not going to stop there. Let's import some sprites. Um, go back into our editor here. I am going to go to the bottom of our file. Again, I'm going to use some of my Vim shortcuts. I'm going to say 3JS. 
control X, control K, and I have one here that says sprite. Now I have a sprite function that I can call. So let's go back up here. And right after we load that level, let's go ahead and say load sprite and give it what image we want. We're going to say sprites. And uh, again, these are from Freedom. And I'm going to pick one. That's only loading so many. Let's see. I know that when I was practicing earlier, yeah, this one here, let's go ahead and just choose Cyber 8, because I think that's one I chose earlier. And we're going to have to move him and resize him. Right now he's going to be placed right in the middle of the level, so he'll probably be in that main wall right here that we created. So let's go ahead and refresh, and yep, there he is. He's small and in that wall. Also, our camera starts pretty close, so let's actually, before we go any further, let's go to where we create our camera right here and move it out a little bit further we'll say 10 and 10 and now if we restart this we're a little bit further back which is nice okay <coughs> excuse me and um <coughs> excuse me something in my throat to make things a little bit easier i'm actually going to go back into blender i can remove this in code but i'm just going to take our level here i'm going to grab it and uh, on the Y, move it here. Oh, really got something scratching in my throat there. And I'm going to go ahead and export this again, just over our last one. And I think that that might move our scene a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, so there we go. Now we're, we're actually looking more at the center of the scene. Let's go ahead and scale up this sprite. So go back to the code here. And when we load the sprite, we can actually load that sprite into an object. So I'm just going to say sp1 for sprite 1. And then I'm going to say sprite 1.scale. And I'm going to go ahead on the y, I believe. Actually, let's scale them up four times the size. And let's do the same on the x axis. We're going to save that and refresh. And there we go. He's a, a bit bigger and standing right there in the center of our level. Perfect. Now, if we want to make more of this same guy, like let's say we created him so he does move around and he's animated and does whatnot, we can easily clone him. So what I'm going to do here, put some spaces here just to make things a little clearer. What I can do is I can say sp2 equals sp1.clone. It's a function. And then I can take our scene and I can add to it that sp2. Great. Only issue here is they're both going to be in the same exact spot. So let's go ahead and take sp2.position.y and we'll move it to 10. Let's see where that puts him. We should have two sprites. Oh, I moved him that y. Let's move him on the uh, x. Sure. There we go. Now we have two of them and they are in our level. We can also do the same thing that we've already done with creating the sprite here. Let's go ahead and copy that. We'll go ahead and change this. We'll change this instead of sprite one. We will call it three, three, three. And we're going to change its image. And let's see. Oops. Why is that? I thought there was a. Ah, here we go, boss. Go ahead, boss two B eight. That that should be fine. Uh, but again, it will be in the same position. Right now, it's starting off in the very center of our level. Let's go ahead and move it, uh, and we'll say sp three dot uh, position dot x equals. We'll move him. So let's move him on the uh, z equals ten. Boom. And now we should have, yep, we have this guy here. And they're, they're blurry because they're very, very low resolution. You got to remember the sprites in, in original Doom were very small. Computers were not com what they are today. Uh, and there are things you can do to uh, make these look a little bit better. But the best thing would be to do is just 
create higher resolution sprites because we're stretching them out to four times their size so you can see they're very small to begin with uh, but there we go uh, another thing we can do um, is we can change our, our sky because the default here is just basically we have a 3d environment here with a transparent background and it's just showing the, the web page behind it so if I uh, was to move into our index file here you can see uh, that our background image says that it's a linear uh, gradient uh, from the top to the bottom, red to yellow. So we can just change this to blue and white, and we'll get more of a blue sky looking to our level there. So, and of course, you can also put like a sphere, you know, a dome for the sky, and actually put images of clouds or whatnot. But anyway, this is just uh, you know playing around for a bit, and in about 20 minutes, with a lot of talking, we create this cool little. It's not a game because it doesn't do anything, but uh, 3D environment with some 2D sprites uh, that can now be uh, sent. You know, it's you throw up on a web browser, you can send it to anybody and anyone with a current browser, whether they're on a mobile device or a desktop or laptop, you know, tablet, phones, whatnot, they'll be able to view this. They'll be able to move around. The orbiting camera uh, plugin that we're using here allows us to click to spin. Uh, I can. Uh, center click, which is the mouse wheel, and and move the mouse to zoom in and out, or use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, or I can uh, right click and drag to move left and right. I can do so like that, and then I can spin on that little location. And uh, if you're on a mobile device, a touch screen device, you should be able to do the same things with uh, pinch to zoom, to zoom in and out. Obviously, uh, just dragging one finger will spin the camera like so. And if you use uh, two fingers, I believe is how you move things uh, like so. So pinching one finger or two finger will be the different controls on a touch screen device. Anyway, I do thank you for watching. Again, this is just a view of what you can do uh, with a few simple plugins and uh, some template code uh, in just a matter of minutes. I uh, thank you for watching. And obviously, creating an actual game, adding physics and animations and collision detection stuff like that it takes a bit more work, uh, especially with 3JS since it's more it's not necessarily geared towards game like something like Phaser, uh, which is for 2D stuff, is definitely geared towards games. I wish there are projects out there that are geared towards using 3JS to make games. Uh, I'm not overly excited about any of them. Although if you know of some, that I'm, list them below. Maybe I'll go check them out. Maybe there's some I don't know about. It'd be really nice if someone took 3JS and really geared it towards games, especially if they just made some templates for first-person shooters, third-person shooters, side-scrollers, and then you can just, you know, make your little modifications like you would with something like Phaser. If you enjoyed this, let me know in the comments below. I sure hope you did. I hope you're enjoying Doom Month here at Films by Chris. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Oh, and I should... I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, strip out the unnecessary files from this and throw this up on my web server. Uh, and I'll try to remember to put a link in the description of the video so you can go and check this out right now. And again, if you're on a mobile device, pinch to zoom to zoom in and out and uh, two fingers to slide left, right, forward, and back. And uh, go ahead, check it out. Check out the link in the description of this video. And I hope that you have a great day.